Hello. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. I'm Jonathan Sobel of the New York Times. Uh, I'm pleased to introduce our guest today, Noriko Hama. She's a professor at the Graduate School of Business at Doshisha University in Kyoto. She's a prominent critic of the Abe administration uh, and uh, its economic policies, but not exclusively its economic policies. Uh, and perhaps most famously, she has the coiner of the phrase ahonomics, uh, <laughs> which uh, is part of the title of uh, books she's written on the subject. Uh, obviously, enough of you understand Japanese that that was funny. Uh, if you don't, aho, of course, means stupid, stupid economics. Um, her title today is similar to the title of her latest book on the subject. It's Life Beyond Abenomics. Now, that is something like a declaration that Abenomics is over, or at least that it has manifestly failed. Now, in some ways, the timing of that declaration might seem odd. Uh, last week, the Nikkei hit 20,000 for the first time in 20 years. Companies are making record profits. Uh, at least some of that seems to be trickling down in the form of wage increases at major companies this year. Um, all of this uh, is the data that you can hear in the government's uh, press conferences and announcements on the subject uh, of its economic policies. Uh, now, uh, today we're going to hear the flip side of that uh, from Professor Hama. Uh, we're going to hear a little bit about um, if you are um, a critic of Abenomics you know, about the reality, or if you are simply looking for some countervailing data points, then perhaps we're talking about its weaknesses. Uh, in any case, I'm going to turn the floor over for about 20 minutes. Uh, Professor uh, Hama will uh, give us her views, and then, as usual, we will turn it over to Q&A. Uh, I shouldn't need to tell you to turn off your cell phones, but it always seems to be a necessity. Uh, and with that, I will turn over the floor. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much indeed for that very kind uh, introduction and very many thanks for introducing the word ahonomics uh, to today's uh, proceedings at such a, an earlier point. Um, okay, so um, I would like to address um, four points. Um, in my uh, given time of 20 minutes. And actually starting, the, the point number one is actually to do with the title of my talk today, which as was introduced, um, is Life Beyond Abenomics, How to Get From Here to There. Um, I do feel now that I should have been much more straightforward and uh, have put the title as being life beyond ahonomics as opposed to being uh, 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 being polite and calling it abenomics. So that's uh, one regret that I have here. Um, so that's point number one. And uh, point number two actually concerns why I consider ahonomics as ahonomic as it is. Um, and this, the reason behind this is that I feel very much that uh, the team Ahonomics actually suffers from a very bad disease, uh, which I would like to call uh, the bringing back disease, BDD, BBD rather, bringing back disease, BBD. Um, and it seems to me very much that uh, these people are preoccupied, very preoccupied about bringing back things, bringing back stuff. And uh, if you recall, um, the, um, when, when the Abe administration came into power in uh, 2012, um, uh, the year end 2012, they came up with a manifesto. Uh, the, the governing uh, central phrase of which was, let's bring Japan back. And that sort of um, caught my attention. I thought it was a very strange thing to say. Uh, bring Japan back from where? And also, um, the term bring back on this occasion in Japanese is actually torimodosu. And torimodosu um, has the connotation not only of bringing back, but also of taking back. And uh, that sounded rather sinister to me. Um, so I, 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 I was a little worried about that. I, I, I kept on being very worried about that phrase and all wondering, you know, bring back Japan from where, take Japan back from whom. 
And uh, as I started to think about these things, I realized that this bringing back disease, BBD, is not necessarily unique um, to team ahonomics, mm -hmm. and that it may actually be a global problem. Uh, because, um, for instance, you have in Russia, Vladimir Putin obviously wanting to bring back um, imperial Russia, for instance. <laughs> Um, and I think there are many people in the United States wanting to bring back uh, whatever their image of uh, uh, the American dream might be. And in Europe, people are wanting to bring back coherence, uh, which was never there anyway, um, in the euro area. And China obviously uh, would wish to bring back the 10% um, growth uh, era. Uh, so everybody wanting to bring something back. And in that context, I feel very much that what the Abe um, administration wants to bring back is indeed the era of imperial Japan. Um, so this is uh, BBD, uh, bringing back disease. Um, and over the course of time, I have discovered very much what uh, it is that these people are wanting to bring back and uh, how they want to bring it back. Um, interesting revelation in that regard was the uh, Prime Minister's uh, New Year greeting message uh, last year in 2014. This greeting message obviously occurs every year. Uh, but the uh, one that came out last year um, was... <laughs> It was, um, it, it, it was a message um, of some, uh, what was it, 1,680 Japanese characters, which sort of translates to um, about eight, eight minutes um, of uh, speech, if that were actually given as a prime ministerial speech. Um, at Mr. Abe's pace, I think that's sort of the uh, right calculation. Um, and in this eight-minute um, uh, message, the term, the, the phrase, bring back, uh, cropped up uh, three times, which I think is actually quite a lot of times in eight minutes. I mean, if you, uh, 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 if you sort of stretch that to one hour, that would mean that the, the term bring back would crop up 21 times. Um, so that's, that's a pretty high rate of um, uh, uh, appearance. So three times mention of bringing back in the uh, Prime Minister's New Year greeting last year. Um, so what did he say in that speech that he wanted to bring back? The first phrase was, let's bring back a strong Japan. So originally it was just bring Japan back, but now it is specifically a strong Japan that uh, they want to bring back. Secondly, he said, let's bring back a strong economy. And thirdly, he said, let's bring back a proud Japan. Um, so th or these three mentions of bringing back um, appearing su uh, successively, I think, gives you a good idea of the kind of thing that these people have in mind. Uh, it seems to me that they are pursuing the bringing back of a strong economy uh, so that they can bring back a strong uh, 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 country. And um, by, by bringing back a strong Japan, uh, they feel that they can bring back a, a, a Japan that can be proud of itself. So all in all, I think I detect a very strong preoccupation with strength and power um, in uh, the people who catch the BBD. Um, and so that was a revelation which I think came to me uh, by uh, 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 going through the, uh, the PM's uh, New Year um, speech. So, okay, so that is a, uh, preoccupation with strong uh, strength and power um, is the, the, the basics of the bringing back disease. And because uh, the BBD is preoccupied with strength and power, um, I think it ends up uh, uh, showing two rather sinister sint symptoms. Uh, so, two, so that is, uh, so bringing back disease was point, was point number two. And I will now go into point number three, which is to do with the symptoms, the two symptoms of the BBD. Okay, uh, so symptom number one is that people who catch this disease become unable to see what they should be able to see. Um, so they lose, you know, sane sight, if you like. So that's um, symptom number one of BBD. Uh, symptom number two of BBT is that it makes people think 
um, thoughts that they should not be thinking. Um, so it makes people um, harbor uh, very unthinkable thoughts. Okay. Um, so uh, symptom number one, it makes people not able to see things that they should be able to see. Number two, they make people think about things that they should not be thinking about. And I think these two um, symptoms are, have actually a causal relationship between them. I think uh, symptom number two um, uh, uh, makes symptom number one happen. That is to say, because the, um, the sufferers from BBD start to think thoughts that they should not be thinking, uh, they end up not being able to see what they should be able to see. So that's how I sort of um, uh, 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 regard this thing uh, unfolding. Okay, so let's start with uh, symptom number one. Uh, what is it that team aphonomics um, is not able to see? What are the things that they are, they are, they should be able to, to see, but they are unable to see at this time? Um, I think it is uh, to 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 be very succinct about this. I think that their preoccupation with economic growth um, is a um, outcome of this symptom. Um, I feel that the problem with the Japanese economy at this point is not one of a lack of growth, but a lack of distribution. Uh, we are a very already a very mature economy, very, uh, a very large economy. It does not stand to reason uh, that an economy uh, uh, at this point of maturity should keep growing and growing and growing. I mean, a, a, a grown-up person does not uh, keep on growing um, to heights of over, I don't know, uh, two meters and beyond um, uh, at infinitum. Um, although you can sort of grow in this direction at infinitum, that's very easy to do, but it's also a very unhealthy thing to do. Um, so, you know, growth has its place in the economic scheme of things, uh, but it is not certainly the, uh, uh, the almighty answer to every and single problem. Uh, but to them, uh, uh, growth seems to be everything. Uh, but I think the problem, the underlying problem with the Japanese economy at this moment is one of what I would like to call poverty in affluence. Uh, we are such an affluent nation and, in, and yet in, in all of these, amidst all of these affluence, we have this problem of rising poverty ratios. Um, the poverty ratio now stands at 16.1% of uh, J Japanese population, which is way too high for a, uh, an advanced economy such as ours. And so I think this problem of a lack of proper distribution is the point which I think is uh, 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 creating problems for the Japanese economy. And, and I believe that um, there is no way that the Japanese economy can get out solidly um, from, uh, 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 from deflationary conditions unless and until it starts to address this problem of poverty uh, uh, within affluence. Uh, but this is one issue that uh, uh, these people certainly do not look at, uh, who certainly cannot see. And I think it makes, a cert it makes sense uh, for them to be unable to see this issue of poverty in affluence. Uh, if you are actually um, preoccupied with might, uh, power, and strength, uh, you do not really look at the weaker elements within the economy and society. You do not care uh, for the weaker um, elements of society. Uh, all you are concerned with is making the strong stronger, uh, making the large larger, and making more winners out of uh, uh, people who, who are already winning. And I think these, these things are very much showing up um, in the way they conduct um, economic uh, policy. Um, and uh, there was a certain mention of uh, a brief um, mention of the trickle-down um, effect uh, by our chairman. And uh, that is certainly a point that uh, these people make. We are doing this, uh, we are trying to make the, the strong stronger because that will have a trickle down on the rest of the economy. Um, I think that's really very much uh, uh, attempt at hoodwinking people. And I really do not think that these people are serious, uh, are seriously concerned about whether what they are doing uh, will uh, 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 trickle down or to uh, uh, go to spread itself um, to the rest of the economy, uh, starting from the, the strong, uh, stronger and the mightier, if you like. All they are concerned about is to, to make the strong stronger so that they can be uh, more helpful uh, 
in bringing back that strong Japan that uh, they are so concerned about. So that's the problem uh, of not being able to see what they should be able to see. And why are they so blind to the weaker um, elements uh, in the economy? I think that is because of the second symptom of thinking uh, things that they should not be thinking about. Uh, what is the unthinkable thought that they are harboring at this moment? I think it is a it is the conspiracy uh, to reverse the relationship uh, between the nation and the state in, a, in, in the nation state of Japan. Now, we all know that in a healthy and modern nation state, the state is there to serve the nation, and the nation, which is the people, of course, uh, assume that the state as a service industry, providing services, public services to the people, will do their job well. And it is on that understanding that the nation, i.e. the people, pay taxes uh, so that uh, they, can, they can keep the state machine going. Uh, but I think that uh, these people who are suffering from BBD are actually trying to reverse this uh, relationship and, and trying to make the nation uh, serve the state trying to make the nation work uh, so that a strong state can be brought back, uh, trying to, to, to make us provide services to the state uh, so that a strong state can be brought back. So this, I think, uh, uh, this seems to me to be the underlying ulterior motive, if you like, uh, 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 which is supporting Ahonomics. And uh, I find that very sinister indeed. Uh, okay, so going on to my fourth point, which is uh, 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 related to the subtitle of my talk today, uh, how to get from here to there, going beyond ahonomics. I think the only thing that will help us to go beyond ahonomics <coughs> is to go back to the basics um, of economics um, and to really uh, re-think um, uh, what economic activity is all about. Uh, I should point out that economic, point, economic activity is activity which is unique um, to human beings. Uh, there are no uh, other living organisms in this world which conduct economic activity. Um, so economic activity is unique to people. And something which is unique to people should obviously make people happy. So, if, so anything uh, which makes people unhappy, anything uh, which violates human rights, uh, we should not consider such activity as economic activity. I think that ought really very much to be our starting point. And indeed, in this, re in this respect, uh, a very good um, hint, shall we say, of what the basics actually are, uh, ha is given to us, in fact, by um, the founder of economic thought, um, who of course is Adam Smith. Um, you cannot go more basic than Adam Smith if you're talking about economics. Um, Adam, Adam Smith made it very clear, in, certainly in the wealth of nations, but also more so in his theory of moral sentiment, um, that people are people because they uh, can feel sympathy, uh, because they, ha they have compassion, and that economic activity is activity which is conducted by people who can p feel other people's pain, uh, who can cry, uh, in fact, in, in front of other people's misery. Uh, people who are compassionate are the people who conduct ec uh, uh, economic activity. Um, so when we think about uh, uh, rational economic p uh, beings, homo economics, uh, we should uh, uh, start from the assumption that these homo economics people, uh, people with compassion who are able to cry in front of other people's misery. Um, that is something which has been established as the starting point of economic thought by the founder of economic uh, 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 thought. Uh, so I think we should, uh, 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 we, can, we cannot do better than to go back to that premise. And if we do have that uh, concept of economics in mind, we will not be hoodwinked by the people who, are, who have been caught by the uh, nasty disease of BBD. Thank you. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for a thought-provoking talk, which uh, I think you all agree in some ways surpassed economics and brought us into the fields of uh, not only political science, but 
uh, philosophy. And uh, I'm going to open up the floor to questions. And, and be before I do that, I want to just use my prerogative as moderator to ask the first one. Uh, and uh, you know, at the risk of bringing this down to a banal level again, I want to talk a little bit about economics. Uh, and since the start point of the critique uh, is an economic critique, I was just wondering if you could tell us uh, briefly, uh, from your point of view as a professional economist, um, why we should disbelieve the actual policies behind abenomics. I mean, you know, if you were in charge, uh, you know, it's it, you, you talked about the kind of attitudes behind abenomics and what you called ulterior motives. Uh, but for example, if you were running the Bank of Japan, what, do, what does that mean? How does that translate to policy? Uh, I mean, do you think that monetary policy is too loose? Do you think the government is spending too much, too little? Uh, if redistribution is the issue, um, is it a question of more government spending? Do you think there needs to be more reform, less reform? Mm -hmm. uh, just a, a, a few points on the more on the specifics of, of abenomics and, and your views would be great to start us off. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, frankly, I don't think abenomics has any specifics to, to, to worthy of speaking about. Um, but okay, we will leave, leave that aside for the moment, and uh, just like to take up your point about the Bank of Japan. Um, well, I don't think, I'm afraid, um, uh, I do not think that the Bank of Japan is any, long, any longer a central bank. And, uh, 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 well, at least uh, insofar as uh, we are concerned about the team economics bit of uh, the Bank of Japan, I think the Bank of Japan has really very proper bankers, central bankers in there, who at least, who I am sure, are bleeding in their hearts to see what is happening at this moment. Uh, the Bank of Japan has merely become a bailing out organisation for the uh, 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 for the government for the government and its JGBs, and um, there is very little reason reasoning or rationale behind what they are doing at this moment, other than um, to prop up the. Uh, to, uh, uh, JGB prices and also to, to keep up the pretense that the Japanese government is not bankrupt, uh, uh, keep up the pretense that the Japanese economy, uh, government is not uh, bankrupt. So I really do not think that monetary policy as such actually exists anymore in this country. So that's for, uh, 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 for the central government. As for fiscal policy, I think that uh, uh, fiscal policy, I think fiscal policy, quite frankly, has been hijacked uh, by the ulterior motives of um, uh, economics, in fact. I mean, if you look at the latest budget, uh, military spending, largest uh, 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 level um, in post-war history, uh, increasingly less um, funding uh, uh, advocated, um, attributed rather to, to social security um, issues. Um, and very selective spending in terms of uh, public uh, uh, spend, public investments as such. Uh, so I think very much the uh, hijacking of public policy for private interests is what is happening um, in terms of policy at this moment. And also in terms of the very basic, everyday, ordinary economic statistics, you don't really see anything changing very fundamentally in this economy. Yes, unemployment has come down, but um, uh, structural unemployment is very, very resistant and um, very obstinately sort of hanging around 3.8%. And these people who have been unemployed for a very long time increasingly become unemployable, as a result of which we have this very strange phenomenon of uh, a, a lack of labor pre uh, 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 preventing growth, even as uh, the pain of the unemployed people, the, the structurally unemployed people, and the part-time workers and so forth still continue. And even if you look at very, uh, uh, very um, standard and representative uh, economic statistics as the uh, Bank of Japan's Tankan, for instance, um, it is very reluctant to admit uh, that there is actually anything uh, very uh, solidly productive happening in the economy. GDP figures very, very um, uh, dismal. So I really do not think that um, the, the statistics uh, bear out uh, 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 their claims. And also, as for, for the Nikkei index, uh, that, that has totally 
parted company with economic reality on the ground. Um, and uh, this is what you get uh, when, you, when, when policy preoccupies itself too much with things like these stock markets. Um, so, I mean, I think there, is, there, there really is no um, solid indication there uh, that um, things are happening in the way that the government uh, says they are. Thank you. All right, now I'll tur turn it over. Uh, one, two, and then three. All right. Cool. <laughs> uh, my name is Hiroi Kujita, and I'm independent. Uh, Professor Hama, are you going to say that um, being strong, powerful, is not right? Uh, thinking of the uh, growth of the economy. Or are you going to insist that you know, uh, being weak, powerless, is good? OK, thank you very much. Uh, I think, basically, um, preoccupation with power and strength is actually a sign of weakness. Um, and uh, it is a sign that you have no self-confidence. And the way they are saying that they can only bring back a proud nation if they can bring up back a strong nation, that uh, speaks a lot to me about the intellectual shallowness, if you like, of the uh, thinking of these people. Um, you do not have to be uh, strong to be proud of yourself. Um, and you do not have to be proud to be, uh, uh, to be strong, to be uh, uh, confident of yourself. And I think if you have a broad outlook on how to live happily with each other, you do not become too preoccupied with how strong uh, you are vis-a-vis -vis other people. Um, so I think it is a very childish thing to be preoccupied with power and might. And that childishness, I think, is the thing which very much worries me about this uh, uh, administration. I, I do indeed think that it is, uh, it is time that uh, we parted company with childish things, as uh, St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians says. Uh, Brian Fowler with Bloomberg News. I don't disagree with the idea that there's a problem with distribution, whether it's between the rich and the poor or the big cities and the countryside. But why are we not seeing a groundswell of protests from these people who are the have-nots? Uh, just yesterday's uh, local elections seem to signal that people don't really seem to care. Why is that? Okay, thank you very much. I think two points on that uh, 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 question. One is that, in fact, there is a groundswell of protest, but it doesn't actually show up in the media uh, or, or, or doesn't necessarily become visible to the eye. I mean, I, I, I get invited um, increasingly uh, more often up and down the country uh, 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 by um, uh, 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 citizens' groups campaigning against uh, what the Abe uh, administration is doing. Uh, the Legal Association of Japan is very much up in arms against what uh, 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 Abe is doing. The Catholic Church in Japan, the uh, Bishops' Association, have, has come up with a very strong uh, 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 statement against um, Abe's position vis-à-vis uh, -vis the Constitution. Um, and protests in and around Parliament, well, around Parliament, uh, are growing in numbers, are growing uh, 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 in frequency. Um, so I think all of these things are actually uh, being felt by the Abe government, which is why they are in such a hurry uh, to get things done um, uh, whilst uh, 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 they still have time. Um, so I think there is much more of a groundswell of protest than actually meets the eye. Uh, so that's something uh, which I think I would very much like ask all of you people in this room um, to discover for yourselves. Uh, so that's point number one. Point number two um, is about the uh, support that uh, Abe is getting in, in elections and so forth. And uh, uh, the result of this election, of course, turned out very low, uh, very little contest in there, all sorts of reasons. Uh, but one of the reasons why uh, a certain handful of people, a uh, certain, well, a, a, a substantial, shall we say, handful of people keep voting for Abe. I think this is something which I would like to call um, hope born out of desperation, if you like. Uh, people are so 
um, uncertain, so frightened um, about the current situation. They are so desperate uh, that something happens um, to make life better for them, uh, that they cling on to the hope that these are the people who will bring the changes. And uh, they are almost, I think, demanding uh, that uh, uh, they get results. And uh, they are asking themselves and the, uh, the, and the government, surely this is not all, is it? You know, if we wait a few more months, um, surely you're going to bring out results for us. Um, we are uh, 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 um, we are prepared to wait, uh, wait out the time until you get the results. Because if you do not get the results, then there is only desperation, only darkness for us left ad infinitum. So that's the kind of um, sentiment which I think that this government is preying upon, if you like, and uh, that makes me actually very angry indeed. Thank you. I'm Yuri Kageyama with the Associated Press. I just uh, have a couple questions. Um, first of all, you said this Japan has a distribution problem. And compared to the United States, where there's a lot of poverty, a lot of uh, you know, poor immigrants um, and so on, I, I think Japan might be even said to have less of a problem than the United States. The other thing is, of course, Japan has changed. Everybody had lifetime employment. There was less global competition. Some of that is unraveling. And a lot of people are dissatisfied. Smart people like you are dissatisfied. But maybe they should just go to Silicon Valley or maybe should face up to the fact that things are globalizing. The other thing is, like, what is the solution that you're proposing? You're saying that everybody is uh, bringing back, has, has bringing back disease. You just want to bring back Adam Smith. Myth. I mean, that's like bringing you back on a big scale. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Um, so two points. First point, um, I don't think having a less of a poverty problem than the United States is uh, much of a comfort um, uh, to Japan. In fact, uh, Japan, I think Japan, the US, Israel, Turkey, um, Mexico, and Chile are, I think, the six worst uh, record holders in terms of poverty in uh, more or less uh, developed nations. And the, uh, uh, the country which constantly has the uh, lowest rate of poverty uh, amongst uh, uh, developed nations is Denmark, uh, and Denmark's poverty ratio sort of hovers around 5 to 6 percent uh, persistently. Um, and of course, Japan as a macroeconomic entity is much more affluent than Denmark. Uh, and for us to have a uh, poverty ratio which is three times as large as Denmark uh, seems very, very strange to me and something I think very much needs to be done about the situation. Um, so about bringing back, so do I myself have the bringing back disease? Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, but what needs to be done? I mean, I think there is a lot that can be done to um, remedy uh, the uh, warped uh, redistribution structure that we have ended up with at this moment. I think taxing, uh, tax and taxing the rich at a much, much higher level of uh, marginal uh, tax rate is certainly something that needs to be done. Uh, the Japanese income tax scale has become enormously flat. Um, and that has benefited nobody, uh, certainly not least the Japanese government in terms of uh, tax intake. Um, so progressiveness does need very much to return to the um, income tax scale uh, structure in Japan. That is certainly th something that can be done to remedy the, the, uh, the current situation. And also more power to the regions, I think, will do will go uh, far in terms of remedying the redistribution problem. I think if you're handling these issues of poverty and of income disparity in a in smaller local communities, you are much more able to more efficiently deal with the problem, uh, bring money to uh, 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 where it is actually uh, uh, very much needed. And so, yes, more power to the regions is certainly an answer. And the other macroeconomic answer to this whole distribution problem is, well, the other two answers really is, one is uh, 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 wage 
uh, wage rates need to come up further, not not in terms of the kind of uh, spring wage offensive answers that uh, we got just lately. That was all really very much about making the strong stronger, uh, but to uh, remedy the uh, uh, income disparities and to get uh, real wages uh, starting to rise again, I think is a very important issue. And also, not unrelatedly and very importantly, we need to, I think, uh, see uh, interest rates uh, which fluctuate uh, more reasonably along with economic uh, with the economic situation. I think very much that uh, uh, quantitative easing and uh, quantitative easing and uh, zero interest rates are actually doing more harm uh, than good in terms of this whole um, disparity income disparity issue, um, because you know uh, pensioners and uh, fairly low income people who have thought who thought that they could depend on their savings um, to, to keep them uh, living uh, decently uh, 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 over and beyond retirement have no hope now because their, their earnings or their savings rather are not earning them anything. Um, so making interest rates work normally, uh, bringing back monetary, more normal monetary policy is not actually uh, just a question of macroeconomic management, but it is also very much uh, deeply connected with this whole issue of redistribution. And of course, um, in the globalized world, yes, people can go and uh, work in Silicon Valley. Uh, 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 people who want to do so will do so. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the, the, the role and the responsibility of a nation to its, uh, 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 of, of, of a state to its nation is that the people who do not have that flexibility and mobility still uh, are able to live a decent life. Uh, this is um, something which incidentally uh, is um, written about in Tom Piketty's uh, Capital in the 21st Century, chapter four of that book, um, uh, addresses this issue of uh, 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 nation states uh, as a, a social state. Uh, the need to bring back a social state is the topic of uh, chapter four of that book. Uh, not a socialist state, but a social state, uh, by which he means uh, uh, the state is there to, to, to remedy the uh, uh, redistribu redistributions and so forth. Uh, so I thought that was a very important chapter in that book, less talked about than it deserves. Uh, so that was an interesting uh, point in that book, and uh, uh, it makes say, yeah, well, great minds think alike. Thank you. Who's next? Yeah. <clears throat> Siegfried Niedel, freelancer from Germany. Um, American um, analyst uh, Shayla Smith, she wrote a book uh, about uh, about China and Japan, and she says, domestic policy in, Ch in Japan changed because of the emerging China. So it, it, it means uh, Japan society now, it's, it's more a kind of a uniting here behind a kind of a, a leader who, who uh, people think he will be safe uh, Japan from a strong China. And if this is the case, what does it mean for uh, all these kind of social problems? If people, and, and you, you said uh, people don't want to see what, what, what they have to see. If people think uh, we only have to see, we have to look to China to, to be strong against China and, and don't think about the economy, what, what, what does it mean for, for, our, for, our, uh, for the Japanese society? Mm. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, I think um, that um, it is very, very um, prominently uh, Mr. Abe who has gotten into that mentality that you just um, 
illustrated for us. He is, I think, very much, uh, his preoccupation with power and might very much coincides with his fear of China, if you like. And so that's the kind of uh, 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 um, sort of mentality that he certainly is fixated in. Um, and I really do not think, well, of course, there are, there will always be a certain um, number of, or certain ratio of the Japanese uh, population who, who, who go along with him. Uh, but as I say, um, very, I, 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 I think certainly not a minority of Japanese people are very frightened uh, by Mr. Abe attitudes vis-a-vis -vis China and South Korea and indeed the rest or the rest of Asia uh, for that matter. And I think that um, in fact a lot of people feel um, that if anything Mr. Abe is the problem in terms of our relationship with China and the rest of the, the, the rest of Asia. And that he's the one who is creating the antagonism, stirring up fears on their side as well as our side. So I really, um, uh, I certainly do not think that he's uh, being in any way constructively helpful in terms of our relationship with, uh, with the rest of Asia. And um, I think, a, a, as I say, a, a good, fair ratio of the Japanese um, general public uh, feel very much that um, he is more of a liability in that, in that respect. Um, and what else can I say on this point? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I think that uh, that this whole China issue is constantly being um, uh, uh, showed up as the reason why Japan should become a stronger nation, the reason why Japan should be able to send its uh, self-defense uh, uh, forces abroad and so forth. But that's, that, that actually, I think, is frankly uh, exacerbating the problem. And it has always been a pacifist uh, stance that has prevented the tensions from building. So, I mean, I think we have a very counterproductive uh, government in place in terms of keeping Japan on, uh, the, uh, on course of peace. Um, uh, with the rest of the world. Okay. Thanks. Who's next? Uh, hello. I'm Roy Lockheimer, an ancient freelance member of this club. Um, in your talk, you mentioned several points I found uh, extremely interesting. Uh, one that you talked about the uh, Abe campaign slogan of return Japan, presumably to a former glory. I think also there was an implication there, return Japan from the mess that the previous socialistic parties had left it in with great uh, debt and uh, too many services and not enough money coming in, free tolls on the highways and things like that. Uh, you didn't mention that, but I think that was part of the implication of what he was talking about. You also, uh, we discussed, but you didn't mention beggar thy neighbor policies, which are the classic definition of what's going on at the printing press at the Bank of Japan, uh, printing a lot of free money, uh, causing the yen to decrease in value, and uh, prices in Japan to go very high for the consumers. They feel it every day. This uh, mentioning of the Bank of Japan, I think you said that uh, you thought its reduced influence would be Desirable. I'm not sure if I caught that correctly, but it reminded me of what uh, uh, Ted Cruz, a candidate on the Republican Party for president, he said that we ought to abolish the IRS, various government agencies. Uh, would you agree with a policy like that for Japan? Thank you very much. Um, and no, I would not agree uh, with such policies. I don't know about the IRS, but uh, certainly the central, uh, a central bank has a very important role to play um, in uh, 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 national economies management. And I think that um, I, I, uh, I, I did not express myself properly. I don't think. I mean, what I uh, 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 what I would say. 
um, is, if anything, that the central bank, the Bank of Japan, needs to have much more of an influence on policy making at this time. I mean, it has no influence at this moment in policy making in Japan. At this moment, it's merely an agency of the Japanese government at this point. Um, so that is a very, very wrong position for a central bank to 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 take. A central bank is there to protect the value of the currency, but um, at this point in time, as you, as you very correctly pointed out, uh, the Bank of Japan is doing the opposite. It is very trying very hard uh, to make the Japanese currency lose its value. Um, so that is a violation, I think, very much of the mandate of a central bank to go in for the bigger thy neighbor policies, uh, which, of course, uh, these uh, developments will lead to. Um, so I would very much uh, hope to see a central bank which behaves more like a central bank uh, than well, pretty much any of the central banks at this time globally, but all, most notably the Bank of Japan, which at this moment has, as of it has, uh, has of its own accord abandoned uh, the very important policy role that it has and has, uh, as I say, become merely an arm uh, of the Japanese government. I think that's a very serious uh, uh, situation we have on our hands indeed. My name is Stefano Carrera. I am a journalist for the Italian Economic Daily newspaper, it's Sole 24 Ore. One issue for this year is uh, what uh, the Prime Minister Abe will say in a speech to commemorate the 70 years since the ending of the World War. So give us a forecast, uh, in your opinion, what he will say and maybe what, in your opinion, what he should say and which kind of possible uh, effects of the, his speech will have. Uh, in Asia and as well. Mm. Thank you. Okay, very, very important question. Also, very hard for me to think Mr. Abe's thoughts, uh, which uh, I think the two are totally anatomy to each other. But um, that being said, um, I think it's pretty clear that he will do his level best um, to undo uh, what has been uh, said over the years um, in the Prime Minister's uh, speeches about, uh, 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 about uh, recent history. Um, I think he will, uh, well, judging from what he has uh, uh, said thus far, uh, 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 his point is that uh, we should not be too, again, preoccupied by words. Um, it is the spirit that counts, is uh, what he has been saying. And that, in, that sort of says to me that he is trying very hard to abandon the words, the phraseology of past um, declarations um, to, to assert or to bring uh, uh, forward his own view of what uh, uh, he, what he sees as history and what he wants to see happening. Uh, the thing which he has repeatedly said uh, that is he wants to um, go beyond uh, the post-war regime. Uh, that he wants to uh, uh, get rid of the post-war regime. And that, I think, is strongly related with the uh, BBD disease. What do you get um, if you do away with the post-war regime? You get Imperial Japan, going back to Imperial Japan. Um, so I think he will maneuver his hardest uh, to uh, justify or to give credence to the path uh, back to Imperial Japan um, in this speech and uh, uh, elsewhere. Um, and uh, I don't know how subtle he will manage to be. He certainly does not strike me as a very subtle person. Um, and, and because he's in a hurry to get things done, uh, he may come out with a very bold statement uh, which upsets uh, Asian uh, uh, neighbors and, uh, and which probably will lead to uh, 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 even greater justification on his part that Japan needs to be stronger. Uh, so I, th I, I do see a lot of dangers, a, a lot of uh, uh, causes for concern uh, in the way that he is trying to uh, uh, build up this speech. I think, again, the key uh, phrase uh, which ties up with what he seems to be trying to do is that his... Uh, uh, his statement that he wants to to do, to do away with the post-war regime, uh, which seems to me that he's saying uh, uh, do away with post-war peace, 
do away with the constitution as it is. It all, I think, lines up very much along those uh, lines of thinking. Um, I'm Martin Fritz with the German business magazine Wirtschaftswoche. Um, Germany also did away with the post-war regime without becoming a, a fascist again, so I think uh, there are other options also. And also I think that Mr. Abe uh, is not as bold and, as, and brave as you think. Uh, Hopefully. <laughs> but besides this point, um, I hope so. <laughs> as an economist, um, you criticized the Bank of Japan for buying all the JGBs. Uh, I think this is a rather intelligent policy to get rid of the you know, this huge debt. W what is the alternative? High interest rates and a collapse of the Japanese financial system? Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, there is an alternative, which I think this applies actually uh, uh, pretty much broadly on a global scale. I think uh, having got thus far in terms of the problem of national indebtedness, I think a way needs to be devised of making um, governments go bankrupt uh, without hurting the rest of the economy too much. Um, I think there needs to be a, 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 a mechanism uh, a global mechanism, if you like, uh, 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 set up so that uh, nations in trouble or, uh, uh, or other states in trouble can actually go bankrupt without upsetting too many people um, of the general public. I think it's about time that that kind of a mechanism uh, 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 was devised. Um, otherwise, it just leads to, to, to um, conspiracies, to attempts to hide uh, 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 indebtedness and so forth. And I really don't think that that's going to work. Um, but uh, for the moment, I don't think for the immediate future, I really don't see such an institution starting to, to, to operate. But I think it's still something that needs to be very seriously thought about in this globalized age. Uh, because uh, uh, national governments, uh, I think, will increasingly and continue to have problems of debts and uh, 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 deficits uh, when people and uh, goods and money flow so easily across borders. I think we need to think of a new institution to um, uh, uh, cope with the problem. Thank you. So you're saying Japan, Japan should default on its debt? I think so. It would be a much more honest thing to do. Um, and I think this whole conspiracy to hide this huge uh, 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 indebtedness is, I think, a, a, a crime against uh, the state's crime against the nation in its own right. Süddeutsche Zeitung, Neidart. Just to follow up, uh, this institution you just mentioned won't be here in time for Japan. Mm -hmm. Now, I ask, I've asked you this question, I think, twice already. Uh, the moment uh, the, the state is bankrupt, the, the BOJ is, as you say, a bailout organization of the state. So eventually someone will say the emperor is naked and people will believe it. You say it, have been saying it for a while. Uh, and then I asked, what's going to happen then? Uh, now, before you said, the cha if it's uh, honestly explained to the Japanese nation, they will understand and they will take a cut. But the way you describe the mood in the country, this is less and less uh, possible. So how, how do you envision this moment when the emperor is really naked? Mm. Well, I certainly think people should prepare for, the, um, for that eventuality. Um, and as for pe how people re react, I agree with you. I, I did say um, in previous, on previous occasions that, uh, uh, as was just explained, um, if people uh, uh, become used to the idea, if, if uh, honest explanations are made about the bankrupt state of the state um, and uh, preparations are well made, um, I think we, uh, uh, we may just be able to avoid panic. Um, but uh, that is certainly not the intention of this government. Um, so under these circumstances, uh, uh, what can people do? I mean, under these circumstances, I think there is a very high uh, uh, likelihood of a total uh, collapse of the yen and uh, JGB prices in the not too distant future. Um, 
especially if and when, and this is of course a big if, um, if the BOJ actually manages to uh, achieve its target of 2% inflation. Um, at that point, they will obviously have to stop Q Q uh, uh, quantitative easing uh, because they have been saying persistently that they are doing this because they are attached to the uh, 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 to the inflation target, and this is not uh, bailing out the government. Uh, if that is if if that is true, then obviously, if they get two percent inflation, they will have to stop. Uh, but. I'm sure they would not be able to stop, and that at that point they would have been uh, 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 shown up as having lied the, to the people, and uh, uh, and a stampede away from the N and the JGB is likely to occur at that point. Um, so yes, I mean I think that's I think a very realistic uh, eventuality. Uh, how should people cope? Uh, with this situation, I think that um, a conspiracy deserves another conspiracy to resolve the situation. And I think that people up and down the country in Japan ought to start to develop their own local regional currencies um, so that they can uh, become self-sustaining uh, 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 economic communities and never mind where the yen and JGBs are going. So uh, regional uh, currencies local currencies, I think, is one idea that needs, I think, quite serious pursuit in Japan um, at this moment. I think uh, 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 increasingly Japan is becoming a um, non-workable single currency uh, zone. The Eurozone has never been a workable single currency zone, but I think Japan is actually approaching that situation because of the income diversities, the regional diversities, um, the, uh, the, the, the diversions, the difference in economic performance by region. And if you have this diversity and disparity, uh, the only way you can hold a single currency area together is for the redistrib redistribution mechanism via fiscal policy to be working properly. Uh, but again, as we are discussing at this very moment, the fiscal policy uh, side of this nation's equ uh, equation is falling apart, uh, which uh, indeed by definition uh, seems to suggest to me that Japan is increasingly becoming an un un unworkable uh, single currency uh, region. Uh, so we ought to. Uh, why, uh, so I, I would not be at all surprised to see Japan ending up as a multiple currency area um, if people are uh, quick enough to re de develop their regional currencies. But of course, they will have to do this very much in secret. Uh, because if the, uh, the Bank of Japan gets, uh, or, or rather the bank, uh, uh, the government of Japan gets to, to know of this, they will probably send the uh, self-defense forces or something to, to make them stop. So, but I think that's an idea worth, uh, worth following. Thank you. All right, thanks. Um, it's working journalist first. I'm not sure I don't recognize it. But so if you're not, then I'm going to go over here. Um, yeah. and, yes. <laughs> Yeah, P Professor Hammer, thank you very much. I, I just wanted to maybe follow up on some of your previous comments there. Uh, we've had Abenomics, and back to the Chairman's opening comments as well, we've had Abenomics now for two and a half years. There's another three and a half years to go. Uh, as you mentioned, the Tokyo Stock Exchange has added about one and a half trillion to market capitalization over the last two and a half years. You know, government debt is up as well. I was just wondering if you could offer us your projections for where, you know, government debt might be and Tokyo Stock Exchange might be after three and a half years, given that you've also worked in the securities industry and the, and the banking industry for several years. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, in fact, I have not worked in either the securities or the banking industry. It was uh, I was with a people with with people called the Mitsubishi Research Institute, which was um, uh, never really directly uh, attached to any securities or banking institution. Um, but as for those predictions, well, I think three and a half, uh, three and a half years more of economics is really a very, very chilling thought. Um, at, the end of, uh, at the end of which I think very much that both the stock market and the uh, JGB market would have collapsed totally. Um, so heaven knows where the figures would be, but um, uh, certainly way back to the levels of, uh, uh, for the Nikkei, 9, 8,000, 9,000, 9, those are very much likely figures, I think. Um, and as for, well, JGBs, they may have totally disappeared. 
uh, 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 from sight um, by that time. I mean, I think it's that kind of mishandling uh, of economic policy that uh, we are witnessing at this point in time. So um, I'm very, very worried about where the whole situation is going. I mean, I think the more all these people try to drive up the Nikkei, the more they try to hide, hide well, not really hide, but uh, 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 to, to, to pretend that this, the JGB situation is not a problem, I think they will have to pay very, very heavily uh, for those pretenses at the end of the day. So uh, uh, by the end of the Abe administration, if they, uh, 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 if they very unhappily last that long, I think uh, the, the economic uh, landscape would have changed very much for the worse. All right, I think we have time for one last question, and you've had your hand up for a while, so. My name is Khalil Hassan. I'm Ambassador of Bahrain. I was very impressed by your uh, precise presentation. Now, technology, globalization, free market economy, and inequality. Now, if we want to solve the question of inequality, should we look at a global approach to this issue uh, or are we going back to talk about social state? You know, do we need a new approach to all these challenges, or are we going back to what was the tradition before, which I don't think will work again? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Um, I think most definitely, I think global solutions are needed because uh, all these uh, uh, issues are global problems. Uh, but you certainly, I don't think, can solve the problem by going back to the old ways, if you like. New problems uh, uh, need new solutions. Um, uh, but, uh, and certainly the answer is not uh, a socialist um, distribution mechanism, I don't think. Uh, such mechanisms have really never worked because they, uh, they were very... Um, Aesthetic. They were very. They were forced on people um, who never felt that this actually worked. So I think a new approach um, is needed to 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 remedy this problem of global inequality. I mean, I think past uh, regimes and past socialist um, answers were very much uh, answers to nation-state-based inequality problems. Uh, but the current the problems of today are actually global and therefore global um, answers are needed. Now what are the global answers? I think there are two aspects to, 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 to do this uh, to this. Uh, one is in fact a very global approach uh, that uh, this globalized world is a world in which nobody can live alone and therefore everybody needs to work uh, with each other to cooperate with each other. Um, so for instance, uh, a, a forum like the G20 forum, I think, needs much, very much more to be, uh, to reinvent itself as a forum for mutual cooperation and mutual support, um, as opposed to a forum of um, disputes um, and negotiation, which still very much uh, uh, remains the case, uh, very much as was the case um, in a world where uh, nothing was globalized as of yet. Um, so cross-border uh, relationships, I think, need very much to change so that global issues can be addressed globally. And uh, in that respect, I think, uh, again, Tom Piketty's, um, uh, 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 some of his ideas about global taxation and uh, so forth, I think actually uh, 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 are workable, although nobody else seems to believe that. I think they are solutions for a globalized world in a sense. And the second point about this is that I think the more global the issues become, the more local solutions need to become. And again, I come back to this question of regional communities, local communities, uh, being able to uh, command their affairs to a much greater extent, um, again, uh, to the extent of having their own currencies. I think uh, the, that uh, the ability of small, smaller communities uh, to solve uh, problems in a more um, effective um, uh, 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 and speedy manner, I think, is one answer which needs to enter this this equation of uh, global problems that we f we face. Uh, so, for that reason, I very much believe that the era of globalism um, is the era era of localism, 
And the more global we get, the more important local communities become. And I rather think that the, actually the answer ra lies in the regions, um, as well as the global kind of global cooperation, I believe, is necessary. So a twofold approach um, to resolving the issues, I think, may possibly lead us to the right answer. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much. That's, uh, that's all the time we have. I'd like to uh, say a warm thank you. Uh, to our guest, Professor Hama, today. And as per club tradition, we have a, an honorary one-year club membership. And, and you might be interested to know that, that we are, uh, have been experimenting with our own local currency for many, many years. <laughs> it's, uh, it's called CHITS. You can run up a tab. Uh, and, and I would encourage you to put your money where your theories are and buy as many CHITS, chits as you can while your yen is still worth it. Brilliant. All right. There we are. <laughs> thank okay, you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.